we know snakes and ladders but what is moksha path what is its meaning and the story behind it and if you can tell us now itself how is it possible that a board game can give us guidance and readings for our lives uh sure sherpa so moksha path is you know if you really literally translate it it's the it used to be the patra or the you know paper where the moksh or the path to moksh was drawn so it's basically the paper where you will find the board it teaches you the path to salvation uh by telling you what you need to do or where your soul needs to evolve in order to ascend and reach salvation eventually um uh, with the snakes and ladders board we have every box so it is numbered as 1 to 72 the current version which is the modern version of the moksha path board and every box has its own meaning every row has its own meaning there are some snakes there are some ladders the ladders are of course things that will make you climb up in life the snakes are things that you know or emotions or things that you're doing in life where you're getting bitten or you're falling down so it's very interesting because um, yes if you're doing a soul path reading you can you know naturally know where your soul is right now and where you need to go what are your karmic patterns or repetitive patterns in life that you need to resolve to move ahead uh and if you're looking at a question by question modality saying that well, you know what do i need to do right now in order to get this it can answer those kind of questions as well that sounds amazing nandita nandita is there any science or logic behind this that it's a board game so how does it give us our answers what is the uh, what is happening here that we are able to get our answers with it i wouldn't say science but it does uh, you know inculcate all of the sacred knowledge in terms of bhagavad gita our vedas our purans and upanishads and you know inculcates everything in one board game every religious book or every sacred text that you may have read will tell you that you need to follow the path of righteousness which is dharma in today's world we look at dharma as religion so follow the path of religion in order mm-hmm. to ascend but dharma was not religion dharma was essentially just following the right path you know if you look at buddhist cultures as well not just hinduism it does teach you the path to dharma and tells you how that is what is required for you to eventually liberate from this planet or from the universe yeah and uh, yeah so all of that knowledge has been brought together in one single board where it will tell you that this is the path you need to take in order to move ahead in order to ascend in order for your soul to evolve so there will be snakes as well because we all know that nothing is simple nothing is plain nothing is you know just go and there are no speed breakers and no obstacles in life there are always going to be so th- that's what the snakes are there are going to be obstacles in life even when you want to ascend mm. and uh, how well you take care of those obstacles will allow you to ascend further mm. whether you allow those obstacles to just you know make you fall and never grow back up, uh, you know get up again and get going or do you allow the snakes to become learning uh, you know places where you can yeah. learn from and then grow from there mm. so that is yeah. what it does it does have all of that knowledge in one board and you can know where you are where you need to yeah if who would have thought that you played with this all our lives and it exactly. actually ha- it has like the potential to make us reach liberation so what you're saying nandita is that there are there are a series of steps and everybody we will see the board nandita will show us the board and we will see the meanings of the boxes the snakes and the ladders that is coming up so nandita you're saying that with these series of steps that either the we get bitten by the snake or the ladder helps us ascend in this way is how we reach our liberation and that is why it is called the moksha path the path to liberation right all right okay it does sound 
Exactly. It was created by the rishis and yogis. So yeah. you know, it was not just common man that was creating these. It was created originally to teach children, uh, you know, our ancient knowledge, what values they need to inculcate in life and how to live with the moral values that it teaches so that they can live a better life. So that they know with ease, you know, it's a game. Yeah, so for yeah. children, it was made as a game to teach them very, very sacred knowledge and allow them to understand that. And, you know, like we have our moral science classes and we have mm. our moral stories and everything has a moral at the end. This board was also created with the same intent to teach children how to live their life in order to grow spiritually and eventually liberate. Yeah. And who would have thought that the game would evolve so much so as to give such important guidances Everybody, we will see how and what all areas can the board help us with. And Nandita has some really amazing stories to share with us. But before I ask some more questions about this, Nandita, how did you choose this? You know, what happened that this got you excited so much that you learned it from four trainers and now you're here to share this with us? What excited you and why did you choose Moksha Pad? So I learned Mokshpat pretty early in my uh, journey as a healer. And uh, I basically accidentally bumped into it when I got a reading from someone who was doing a Mokshpat reading. And I said, okay, let me try and see what it comes up with. It came out with some very interesting uh, facts about me and told me some interesting things what I need to do in life. And it turned out right. So I thought, okay, why not learn this as well? Once I learned it, I thought, oh my God, the knowledge is just vast and exciting, interesting, because, uh, you know, we don't really look at our ancient texts the way we should. You know, uh, if somebody tells me to read the Gita today, I would be like, mm, no, I'm a modern girl. Why should I do that? But uh, all of these aspects that were seen on the board allowed me to really you know think on all of the lines and I have read the Gita since then I am currently reading the Shiv Quran and it just keeps adding to my knowledge base it just keeps adding to the not just the wisdom of course your brain is small and you can only hold as much information as you can but uh, it does give you reasons and uh, for things that have happened in your life and what you need to do right in order to move ahead and that is what I liked about it. Not just the knowledge that was vast, but uh, how easily with stories and everything you are able to understand the right path to go forward. Yeah, it is very colorful and interesting. We are actually looking forward to look at the board, Nandita. And I want to tell everybody that what Nandita is sharing today, you can actually learn this from her and you can take readings from her and of course we have some live demonstrations lined up too so nandita you just mentioned that this has helped you in many ways so can you tell us can you share with us that what all areas of life can we get guidance for using the board and if you can explain to us with the help of some examples that have actually happened so let me start with one of my own examples, when I got my reading done and uh, when I did the soul path reading with the healer that I was doing it with. And I had taken retirement, okay? I was like, okay, now I'm done. I don't want to work anymore. I'm retired and now I'll follow the path of spirituality and do nothing else. And the board very strictly said that it's not the time to retire. It is your time to still work. Why would I keep saying that? And I don't want to work. I want to retire. I want to live a good life. <laughs> I don't want to get into this again. But circumstances were like that, that I got very good offers and I did go back into the corporate world and start working again. So this was, you know, like not planned, but the board said this is what it is and will happen. And it did happen. So that was my first experience with it that just a simple soul path reading can tell me that no your your time is to work and you have to continue working but then when i learned it and i've used it with my clients i've used it for health 
I've used it for career, money issues, um, relationship issues, people wanting to conceive, people wanting to adopt, uh, wanting to open new businesses, wanting to change jobs, everything. You know, even so much as uh, planning surgeries. People will mm. sometimes consult the board and ask when is a good time to plan surgeries mm -hmm. or which doctor is good for me. Should I go with this doctor or that doctor? Mm. So all, all of these kind of, and many more, of course. It just yeah. depends on the kind of question you ask and the board will answer. If there's anything beyond the, you know, four generic realms that we're looking at, health, relationship, money and career, if there's anything outside of these, they both can answer them as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Although I can't think of what else is there apart from health, wealth, career, and court job. cases. Oh, I've yeah. I've done a lot of court cases. Mm -hmm. So those will also give some great insights. Nice. Right. And you did mention about conceiving also. And, and I'm sure as we go along the call, Nandita, you will have more stories to share with us. So Absolutely. And everybody, let us know if you would like to know what can the Mokshapat help with. Ask us, can it help with this? And we will ask Nandita and we will let you know. In fact, there are a couple of questions that have come up on the group. Nandita, I will take them. But before that, I, I did have a couple of more questions. Sure. So Nandita, how accurate other readings that come from the board? Um, in my experience, the readings are at least 90% accurate. Okay. Uh, there are people for whom the readings are 100% accurate. Mm. Okay. For some, they may be 80% accurate. But uh, this also depends on what you're going through in life currently. And whether you come to me with clear energies or whether you're lying to me when you come to me for a reading, all of those aspects can also impact the actual guidance that comes from the board. Because it is basically, and uh, you know, the board will read your energy and answer. Mm. It's just like tarot. You know, if the person who's coming in for a reading, their energies should be clean and clear for us to be able to give them accurate guidance. If your energies are messed up, and there have been cases, and there are people on the call right now also, where I have cancelled reading sessions. Because mm -hmm. their energies are so messed up that it doesn't make sense to give them a reading right now. And I would say, okay, not a good day to do your readings because you are not in the right frame of mind or in the right energetic mm -hmm. space. So let's do it another day. Mm -hmm. And I'll give them a week or 10 days and then redo their session. Right. So you mentioned a very important point here, Nandita, that let's say when you and I sit for a reading, your and mine, both our energies, the board picks up on it, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that, Nandita. And also, P. Singh has asked in leading to this question that how are the energies understood by the board? So if the board is giving me mixed answers, mm. Mm. okay, or if uh, it's basically something that I, with experience, will maybe test with my intuitive uh, self or will allow m me to read your energies and guide it accordingly, or even when the board starts giving mixed answers for the same question, it's a yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And you're like, what? It says yes, and then it says no, and then it says yes, and then it says no then I know that there's something wrong with the person's energies because either it's not the right time for them to get that answer and they just need to wait a couple of days more and ask the question again mm -hmm. or just redo the session. In fact, you mentioned 80% to 90% accuracy. That is a huge range, Nandita. It's, it's a great accuracy rate, actually. And uh, I have clients who have 100% accuracy also. Mm. It's uncanny how much they rely on the board. Mm. Yeah. And Prerna has asked Nandita that is this similar to pendulum dowsing? We also use a board there. Uh, this is different because it inculcates ancient knowledge. 
Mm. And it will tell you whether you are, uh, you know, what you need to do. So a pendulum, you'll have to ask specific questions to get your remedies, etc. This can give you remedies as well. Mm. Yeah. All right. And Nita has asked, so what details are required to have a reading, Nalita? What details from the person who's getting the reading done? Yeah. Just them and uh, their energy. <laughs> so yeah, I think she meant to ask date of birth, place of birth or any such. Nothing, nothing? is required. Really? It's amazing. In fact, because uh, if you are in front of me, Shilpa, right now, I know that your full name is uh, so and so. Mm -hmm. and I will be able to tap into your energies. The board will be able to tap into your energies. So to that, Namita, let's say we have somebody on the group here who is asking for her daughter. So in that case, you will need to know the daughter's name, right? Yes. So the mother and the daughter both, if uh, if the daughter is asking herself, then I just need her name. But if the mother is asking for the daughter, then I will take both their names. Nice. Interesting. All right. And Prerna, Nita mentioned that this is actually amazing, that you don't need any detail. You just need the name. Yeah, because it's energy based. Mm. So I don't need to calculate anything from your date of birth or your place of birth. It's you and your energy that I'm going to be looking at. Sounds good. We will experience this, everybody. And I want to tell, let you know that we will do the demonstrations. And that is when I will invite you. So hang on there. There are already a couple of requests that have come for readings. Just stay tuned. We will definitely try this out with as many people as possible. We also would love to understand the board first and just look at how interesting and fascinating this is, everybody. Before that, Nandita, is there any requirement of meditation or any anything that needs to be done before you give us a reading? So I do recommend that the person is centered and grounded before they come for the reading. I will ask them to maybe go through a grounding meditation. If they don't already know how to ground themselves, then they can do the meditation and come. Or sometimes I will ground them while the, doing the session as well. 